Hey everybody, Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation. I got some brain food for you today. You saw the title of my uh, program says uh, undertones don't exist. I know some of you probably went, what is he talking about? Yeah, you know me, once in a while, I like to provoke your thought process. That's my job, is to hopefully help us think a little bit about what we're doing. Those of you who know me know I'm a stickler when it comes to language, and I find in our industry we pick descriptors to use. We make up stuff that have nothing to do with what we're doing. Undertones is one of those examples. You can Google the definition of undertone. You'll find it has very little to do with hair color. It has more to do with sound. But we use it, and it is a descriptor that we use all the time. In fact, um, you have <clears throat> all types of educational classes where they show you these things called undertone charts. And uh, what I found interesting about those is that most of the time they disagree. Uh, in fact, one will show you level five has one undertone, and another chart will say level five has a different undertone. You kind of go, why is that? It's because... It's the way manufacturers do it to help it work for their product. That's all that, that, that it is. And most of those underlying pigment or undertone charts are nothing more than estimations anyway. Because actually what allows your hair to lighten is the pigment that's in your hair, the melanin. There's two types, feel melanin, which is granulated pigment, very tightly compacted, difficult to lighten out of the hair, very warm. And then there is eumelanin what we call diffuse pigment, much easier to lighten out of the hair. You can see here, I've compared both of them for you. You can see starting at black hair, they both give you different tones as they lighten different levels of reflect. That's what I call it. So let's talk about why uh, that's such an issue for us. <clears throat> I think because we need to understand that it, we send in words we receive in pictures. So if I say to you it's an undertone, you're going to think it's under something. And then when you apply your color, you're going to be thinking that you are, put, you are putting something over the top of something and that's not what you're doing when we color hair we are not painting a wall painting a fence we are actually taking one chemical product called hair color and we are adding it to a chemical structure called the hair that's the way we make hair color so when hair is lightening during the color process Whatever level of reflect that hair is contributing, once you achieve your target level, that's going to be 50% of our result, okay? Because it's a quantifiable amount of reflect. So let's imagine, let's say that I'm lightening to a level and the quantifiable amount of reflect is 10. And I'm using that very level to lighten the hair. Let's say I'm lightening to a level seven. The quantifiable level of reflect is 10. I'm using a level seven. The quantifiable amount of pigment is a 10, 10 and 10. I'm never going to neutralize the warm tone if I'm trying to eliminate it. Why is that? Because I don't have enough pigment in my color. Because when you're merging two things together, it's a 50-50. So you have to have more of whatever you're, you're using in order to create the result that you're looking for. So for me, I don't even call it undertone. I call it level of reflect. And here's why I do that. If you look at the hair, in its natural state, it's a good solid mass. As I put a lightening product on the hair, I start to break down the structure. That's the only way you can lighten hair is by degrading the structure in the hair, which means as I'm breaking it down, it's breaking down into smaller pieces. It's decomposing, if you will. So as it breaks down into smaller pieces, I'm no longer just reflecting and absorbing light. I'm also doing something called refracting light. And refracted light is the light that enhances reflection. So now the smaller the pieces, the more light reflection I create, the lighter the shade I achieve. <clears throat> so that's really what undertone, underlying pigment, remaining pigment contribution, all of that stuff is. It's really just what the hair is contributing. I call it level of reflect. 
and I'm adding to it. I'm not covering over it. That's why when a color fades and she comes back in, as it fades away, you're going to see exposed is the level of reflect that the hair was had achieved in the initial color process. It's never gonna be lighter than that. It's always gonna be at that level because that was at least 50% of the formulation. So think about that when you're coloring hair next time. Ask yourself, you know, it's not an undertone. I'm not putting a color over it. If I don't have enough pigment, because now they're quantified a level of reflect and a quantified level of color, I mean, if I really want to wipe out any warmth, if that's my big deal, I'm going to have to use either a darker shade or I'm going to have to take the hair slightly lighter and then come in with a darker shade so I can create the result that I'm looking for. So it is a fact. Undertones don't exist. It's a word we use <laughs> to, to teach people in our industry. And actually what we're doing is we're not covering it we're actually adding color to it. So I hope this little bit has, uh, this little bit of information has helped you. And uh, if it has, great. Uh, I always love to provoke your thought process because I believe the more I provoke your thought process, the sooner you're gonna discover your own genius, you're gonna become empowered and you're gonna have great success in hair color. So hopefully you've enjoyed this as much as I have enjoyed talking about it. I hope I see you again soon. Until then, from my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. You guys have a great day.